All right, so today we are diving into something really cool, um, portrait photography, but not just any portrait photography. We're going to go deep on how to create like those stunning studio quality shots using just one light. Wow. Yeah, just one light. Yeah. We shared photographer Sam Barton's tutorial, so we're taking that as our guide today. Get ready for some aha moments, even if you think you know your way around a studio. Yeah, it's amazing what you can do with just a single light when you really understand like the principles behind it. Um, and Sam really dives into hard light in this tutorial, and it's way more versatile than I think a lot of photographers even realize. Okay, so hard light. We're talking about that direct, almost stark light that creates those crisp, defined shadows. Think midday sun, but with purpose. Mm -hmm. And what I find fascinating is that Sam connects this directly to the idea of authenticity in portraiture. Yeah. It's about embracing those raw, real details. Instead mm -hmm. of relying on, you know, heavy retouching, which, let's be honest, can sometimes make a portrait look a bit overcooked, you know. Absolutely. And that's where, like, the power of hard light comes in. Think about it. How do we naturally see and understand faces the sun, right? It's like our, our constant reference point. What Sam does so brilliantly in this tutorial is he recreates that natural lighting scenario, but he does it within a studio setting. And he does it all with a surprisingly minimal setup. Right. We're talking one flash of stand, a simple white wall. And, of course, to the subject. Of course. Now, he does recommend a telephoto or 50 millimeter lens for extra sharpness. But the beauty is, even if you're working with a phone camera, those underlying principles still apply. Absolutely. And on, on that note about equipment, one thing that's really cool about Sam's approach is that he really emphasizes the principles over the gear. Any flash can work for this technique. It's all about adjusting the power to suit your space. Okay. He actually mentions that he prefers to use a flash with more power than he needs and keep the output around the halfway mark so that way he has a lot of room to make adjustments without pushing the flash to its limits, mm. which is smart, but also it speeds up the flash recycle time so you can capture those micro expressions without waiting for the flash to catch up. Oh, that's a good tip. Yeah. All right, so we've got the hard light concept down. We've established we don't need a truckload of gear to make this work. Let's talk placement. Okay. Sam places his flash slightly above the subject angle downwards, mm -hmm. and we can see this really clearly in the example image of Xania in the tutorial. You get these distinct shadows under the chin, the nose even behind the head, and it creates such a strong look. And again, that goes back to that sun analogy we were talking about, right? It's mimicking that natural downward angle of sunlight. You're right. It creates a certain mood, a certain strength in the portrait. And what's so fascinating is that even the slightest adjustment to that angle, even a few degrees, can drastically change the shadows. And as a result, the entire feel of the portrait. And the best part is that Sam really encourages experimentation. Yes. With both the light and the subject positioning. Yeah. He doesn't just give you a formula and say, stick to this. He wants you to play around, see how moving the light or the subject changes things. Yeah. He actually uses Anna's portraits to show how even pulling the light further back can dramatically alter the mood. It highlights something really crucial about portrait photography, which is that it's not just about technical perfection. It's about using light and shadow to tell a story, to evoke an emotion. And pulling that light back creates more dramatic shadows, sure, but it also impacts your exposure. And Sam addresses that directly in the tutorial. He shows you how to adjust your settings to compensate for that. Now, here's where it gets really interesting for me. We're conditioned to think of harsh shadows as something to avoid, but this technique actually embraces them. Exactly, and that's where I think Sam's artistry really shines through. It's about understanding that delicate balance between light and shadow and knowing how to use it to your advantage. Yeah. He talks about this balance a lot. He says that there's a sweet spot between the starkness of like pure hard light, you know, that almost graphic novel look, and softer, more flattering light. He actually aims for around 85% hard light in his portraits. He uses a large reflector with a diffuser to add just a touch of softness without losing that dramatic contrast. He even plays with proximity to the subject to further emphasize facial features like cheekbones. Oh, yeah. You can really see this in the image of Rodé, where the light just accentuates her bone structure so beautifully. Of course, he cautions against getting too close, or you risk those dreaded hot spots where the light is too intense. But even then, he provides solutions. I love that about Sam. He's all about problem solving. Yeah. You know, if you encounter a hot spot, don't panic. Move the light back. Adjust the power or tweak your camera settings. He even talks about shooting at the lowest native ISO, which for his Sony A7IV is 50, to ensure that he's primarily exposing for the flash and not picking up any of that ambient light that might be bouncing around in the studio. It's all about maintaining control, making those micro adjustments to achieve that desired effect. So he's controlling the light 
with his flash placement, his V-flats, even his choice of a simple white wall as mm -hmm. his backdrop. Right. And then he's fine-tuning everything with his camera settings. It's like he really is painting with light. He is. And here's the thing about Sam. He's incredibly open about his process, but he also emphasizes that there's always room for experimentation. He mm -hmm. wants you to take these principles, these techniques, and make them your own. It reminds me of something he says in the tutorial. He says, don't be afraid to break the rules. Yeah. In fact, sometimes the most interesting photos come from breaking the rules. I love that. It's a great reminder that photography is about so much more than just technical proficiency. It's about using your unique vision and voice to create something special. And, you know, Sam really encourages that he wants you to experiment, play with light, explore different approaches. That's how you develop your own style. I love that he encourages this kind of playful exploration, even for something as seemingly technical as studio lighting. Right. Speaking of exploration, he goes into quite a bit of detail about different modifiers and how they affect the light. Oh, absolutely. He shows how even subtle changes to the size or shape of your light source, whether you're using a softbox and umbrella or even just bouncing the flash off a reflector, can drastically change the quality of the light and ultimately the feel of the final image. He even demonstrates how to create a harder or softer light by simply moving the flash closer or farther from the subject. Yeah. It's amazing to see how those subtle adjustments translate into such noticeable differences in the photographs. It's really cool. Now, we've talked a lot about the technical aspects and Sam's amazing approach to teaching, but one thing that really struck me about the tutorial was this, like the power of collaboration. Oh, yeah. He gives shout-outs to the talented individuals who modeled for him, Marisa, Xenia, Rode, Anna, and Candace. It's a good reminder that photography, especially por portrait photography, is often a collaborative process. You know, it's about connecting with your subjects, creating a comfortable and inspiring environment, and working together to bring a vision to life. It's more than just pointing a camera and pressing a button. It's about building rapport, capturing a moment, a feeling. Precisely. And Sam does a wonderful job of emphasizing that human element throughout the tutorial. He talks about the importance of communication, making your subjects feel at ease, and collaborating to create something special. He even talks about how he directs his models giving them just enough guidance to achieve the look he's going for, while also allowing them the freedom to move naturally and express themselves. It's a delicate balance, and it's clear that he's mastered it. You can see it in the final images. Mm -hmm. There's a sense of ease, of authenticity that really shines through, and I think that speaks to his ability to create a relaxed and collaborative atmosphere on set. Before we wrap up our analysis of Sam's approach, mm -hmm. I wanted to touch on something you mentioned earlier, this idea of photography as a journey of continuous learning. Yes. Sam emphasizes this throughout the tutorial. He does. He even says that one of the most rewarding aspects of being a photographer is that there's always something new to discover, something to learn a new technique to master. He's right. It's not about reaching some arbitrary level of perfection and then stopping there. Mm -hmm. It's about embracing the process, pushing yourself creatively, and never being afraid to experiment. It's about embracing the unknown and finding joy in the process of discovery. Beautifully said. So to sum up what we've learned from diving deep into Sam's tutorial, hard light is your friend. Yes.